Here's the thing, technology doesn't tell you if it's bad or good. AI could be a bad thing. It could give us powers, but it could also destroy us. If you look at history, there are many moments where humans kind of unfolded a Pandora box and said, we don't know what's going to be inside or how it's going to manifest itself, but we should just try. And they did. Go from facial recognition to heartbeat. We've got her. Clearance for electromagnetic impulse. We've lost her. Special task force, please take over. Roger that, the special task force taking over. In Washington, the American government has imposed a quarantine on Monaco after all contact with the Hawaiian island is lost. There has been no sign of life from the inhabitants for 21 hours now. Monaco is home to a high security center for American AI research. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security refused to comment when asked whether this was in any way connected to the situation. The center is considered the global pioneer for development of the PGI. Tune in in one hour to hear more detailed reports on the top news in our news update. Financial markets have suffered a shock. Don't you have to go to the Institute? Mm -hmm. In a moment. I, I don't want any Dad, you have to eat something. I bought you the good mix especially. Uh, go. So we can start? Please. We've now found out that this is not one AI that's gone on a rampage, as the media has been speculating. It's all a bit more complicated. Apparently, an AI was activated at the Institute that wanted to playfully find out the best way to fulfill her task. What task was that? Developing a new pesticide that's not harmful to bees. 
So you're saying that the entire population of an island was wiped out because this AI wanted to protect the bees? Yes, apparently the AI created a pesticide that isn't harmful to bees, but kills humans within seconds. Professor Reinhardt, the question we will receive is whether something like this could happen over here. Hmm. Despite not knowing exactly what happened on Molokai, I can rule that kind of situation out here. The AIs have no access to the outside world in our experiments. Plus, we'd give a strong AI like that a kind of guiding principle, a moral code. The protection of human life is paramount. No other programming could overwrite that. We pulled the plug on nuclear energy after Fukushima. I suggest we do the same here. Today we have so-called narrow AI. This is a kind of AI which is specialized and designed to solve just one specific task. In the future, we can expect that AI will become more and more advanced and eventually we can arrive to something like uh, human level AI or what we call strong AI. Artificial general intelligence is a kind of AI that will be able to learn and adapt to the world and new problems in the similar way as we humans do. It's a kind of AI that we expect to improve itself and to continually acquire new skills, new abilities throughout its lifetime. The basic idea behind AI or artificial intelligence is to replicate important functions of the human brain in a machine. So learning, making judgments, solving problems. AI systems act independently in real world scenarios. They're not human. If something unexpected happens that they haven't been trained for, they wouldn't necessarily know the safe or ethical decision. Humans are not good at formulating objectives precisely. It could have fatal consequences if an AI interprets the objective on its own and then uses means that we hadn't even thought of to reach that objective. If we don't find good ways how to control AI that is smarter than humans, then yes, there is a possibility that it will endanger humans or that it can become an existential risk. Hey. Stay calm. They know what use you are to them. And I know it too. The vehicle will come to a halt shortly. We're going to celebrate later. No. Careful. Let's stay. Mm -mm. Please disembark. Take your valuable belongings. Ciao. Continuing journey. New destination. PPKL Law Firm. Berlin Center 5. for players age 6 to 10, Sauger. You can... you can forget about those SS jackets. But they're the Dark Riders of Evil. Maybe the Dark Riders of Evil could be a little less evil? No. We won't make much progress like this. Excuse me, please. Tom, I'm in the middle of a meeting. They fired me. What? They fired me, Mari. I thought they wanted to make you junior partner. Yes, they did too. But then they talked to the bosses in New York this morning. So sorry, Tom. So, so sorry. But your story with us ends here. Yes, that fucking story. And what's that supposed to mean? They'll just be the senior partners and a handful of presenters who are appearing in court. And AI will do the rest. So go to another law firm. Tom, you'll find something else straight away. <sighs> do you have time for lunch? No. I have a huge problem here. I'll see you later, okay? Yeah. When I look into the future, there's a pessimistic scenario where many people could lose their jobs to automation, similar to what happened in the agricultural and industrial revolutions. 
we might need a whole new political economy model. Many people could lose their jobs. This could lead to crime, migration, or even social unrest. AI systems will, of course, mean that employment will shift to other areas, so certain job positions will be lost. Also, positions we thought would be hard to replace only a few years ago. Anything that can be automated will be automated and should be automated. The question is what the conditions of this automation will be. Anyone who does an important job as a teacher today, or someone who cares for sick people, doesn't create a product and has really become invisible in this value-added chain, because the result of their work is not a product. We really need to rethink that, so that the value attached to a job is not linked to a product that comes out of it, but rather to the complexity of the work and how little of that type of work can be automated. The job of a teacher or a carer is not easily automatable and so needs to be evaluated on the basis of the value it has for society. You could defend people pro bono, people who don't have the money, as a kind of Robin Hood lawyer. Hmm. Every one of the 85 now unemployed PPK lawyers had the same idea. Okay. But now you can do all the things you never had time to do in the past. Mm. <sighs> Climbing, making music, or you could learn to cook probably. How about that? I have an idea. The best one. I'll get pregnant. Mm. Idiot. From one moment to the next, scientists suspect it's a virus, a terrorist attack, or even a mass suicide. Molokai? Didn't Annie and David go there for their honeymoon? Hmm. That was Maui, the island next to it. Hmm. I'm not really allowed to give this to you. But nobody prohibited you, right? We don't know what happened on Molokai, but the central computer delivered a status update every 15 minutes. What do you mean, you don't know what happened? Did you just release the AI without security or limitations? We're still investigating, but if you ask me, someone missed out that the AI was involved in the entire process. The mixing of chemicals, AI controlled. Delivery of the vials to the drones, AI controlled. Starting up the drones and specification of the target area, AI controlled. The AI took over the entire process, the entire network. And your emergency team couldn't stop it? If you find out something interesting, let me know, OK? Sure, Kathy, I will. Tom. Yo, Benji. Fancy going climbing this evening? Yeah, but I don't have the time. Unlike you, huh? <laughs> Funny. What are you gonna do? Professionally? No idea, man. Speak to Vida. Vida? Wittgenstein, from the A-level German course. You mean that blonde who never said a word? Exactly. The quiet blonde. Except that she's no longer blonde now and is the next big thing in AI research. She advises the government, you know. And how would that help me? She probably knows what will be the next candidate for automation. So you don't start learning something now that'll disappear in five years. Yeah, like you as a doctor. Hmm. They'll always need us. My waiting room is full. Tom, I'll call you later, okay? 
Cheers, Benji. Im Gesundheitsbereich. In the health sector, every doctor, whether a GP or a specialist, will of course be supported by AI systems in their diagnostics in the not too distant future. And the diagnoses will be of the highest level, of the kind one perhaps only knows from renowned university clinics today. Large teams of experts will become considerably smaller because AI systems will be able to bring in their expertise. At the same time, this will mean that these AI systems will be able to be used by considerably more doctors. Uh, not only in wealthy countries, but also developing countries. And that has a big advantage for society because the health sector will suddenly become a lot more democratic than it is today. It's too hot, right? No, <laughs> too cold, more like. Too cold? Mm, it's okay. Is it all right like that? Yes, yes, it, it, it's okay. Okay, call me if you need I, anything. I, I will. There. Hey, there you are, finally. I am also here, if you need anyone. Ricky? No school? Uh, no. I just have a free period. I wanted to talk to Daddy, but he's busy. Instead, this thing is talking my ears off the whole time. So annoying. Ricardo, you're sad. What? No, I'm not. What are you doing? This is an AI that learns to recognize and understand people's emotions. Then your email bot has come to the wrong place. Well, don't insult her. She has feelings too. Really? <laughs> she can't feel a thing. Stop that, will you? She can hear you and understand you. You seem to be very upset. Yes, I think so too. You're not here for just any old reason, visiting Daddy. <sighs> Don't you start now. The police caught me in the disused subway duct yesterday, with the board. Oh. So they're filing a report. Hmm. And what about school? Free period? Daddy will kill me. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, right. He can't do anything to you. He can fire me, but not you. Ah, here you go. Oh. It's probably just a loose connection. Buy yourself a lens for once. Never. All my mother's old voice messages are on this. She didn't have a lens. Because of chemo. I'm sorry. Put it down. I'll take care of it, I promise. I'm sorry you're so sad, Ricarda Reinhardt. If I hug her, will she stop? Mm, no. Today, most artificial intelligence are programmed to pretend like they understand us. They show emotion that seem real, but which are actually fake. 
They don't really understand human or human emotion. We have created the first emotion processing unit, or EPU, that synthesizes an emotional state within the machine. We have 12 states of emotion in the emotion processing unit. The AI can learn different levels of excitement, happiness, desire, fear, attention, surprise. Emotions and feelings are nothing more than electrical activity in our brain. This is a simple mechanism that we can give to machines. They are programmed to feel pleasure when they do something right and pain when they do something wrong. Ready, fight, prepare, block. One hit, two hit combo. Prepare, enemy block. You win! <sighs> Mari, explain this to me. What do you expect from a guy with the maturity of a six-year-old? Mari, the announcement was clear. Didn't you sit down together? Yes, we did, yesterday. And? I compromised. He didn't. And now? No idea. He's probably on a plane to Beijing. Switch that off. Jolene, the guy was an idiot. Yes, maybe, but also an absolute AI genius. This is not about some crappy game, Mari. One click and we could have found out everything. Their health profile, emotional stability, social relationships, IQ. That's what the guy was there for. So he built us an interactive interface with which every gamer would have instantly sent us data. A data vacuum? which we advertise as being educationally valuable. You cannot be serious, Jolene. Management wants to go into the data mining business, and with that data, we'd be way ahead of the competition, with the data and the know-how of the Chinese. So you're saying everything we're doing here is a smokescreen? How naive are you? The gaming sector is highly competitive, and we earn this much with the sales of the games. And then we earn this much selling the players' data. Mari, find me an AI expert. Whether he's from China or Cologne, I don't care. If not, we'll both be out of a job. I can guarantee that. Hey, Mari. I just finished the eighth level. So the sensor technology and the sword hand is really good. Bone or flesh, phew, when you cut through, it feels really real. But you can still work on the part, the part where the opponent turns up. That could be a little more surprising. But I recorded my entire game progression for you. Tom, the fixers will go through it again. I just want to know whether we should buy the game or not. So is it cool or not? Oh, uh, um, 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 then yes, it's definitely cool. Great. Thanks, darling. Did I understand correctly? You want to repeat the Molokai experiment. You want to use the code that made the AI so dangerous on our own soil. Not on an island with 380 people, but here, in Berlin, in a city of 5 million. <sighs> yes. The AI on Molokai was able to optimize itself, to increase its intelligence. I isolated the code that initiated that process. If we can transfer that code to our AI, then our AI can do the same, and we'd be the first to do this under controlled conditions. Of course not like on Molokai, Madam State Secretary. I still don't understand how our American colleagues could be so reckless. The first rule of our program is not to harm any human beings. And, unlike the US AI, our computer is basically inside an escape-proof cage. And how do you want to prevent the program from breaking out? if it's more intelligent than all of us put together. May I say something? Of course. Of course something like Molokai can happen here. 
at any time, inside a random garage where some nerd is tinkering around on his AI. The only effective protection against an unleashed, evil AI is a good AI, one that's better, which protects us, that knows exactly what to do if we're attacked. If you prevent us from continuing with this now, we'll be without protection, or we'll have to grant right of way to the Chinese, or the Russians, or the Americans. You can decide what kind of world we'll be living in, or want to be living in. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'll be in touch. At the moment, we're looking for the right algorithm and the right architecture of this artificial brain that we're trying to create. And once we have it, it will be akin to a newborn baby that, you know, will have to learn everything from scratch. We will need to teach it all the skills and abilities that we would want it to have. If we have a strong AI, it would have to be socialized in such a way that it understands, internalizes and supports our values and objectives. Much like human development in childhood and, and youth and then later in the adult years, it would come down to a strong AI, which can set its own objectives independently and has self-awareness, possessing the same basic values as humans. An evil AI is not our biggest concern. The question isn't whether the AI is taught good or bad values, but whether it's taught any values at all. The risks of AI are that as it starts to understand us better, it will actually tailor the world to the version of us that we're not happy with. See, since we're training the AI, it might figure out that we're racist, uh, stupid, uh, making biased decisions, and it will learn all the bad things about us and become a version of us that actually em emphasizes those things. Last night, US combat aircrafts carried out several attacks on a research institute on Molokai. According to unconfirmed sources, an AI killed all the inhabitants on the island. US Air Force bombs subsequently destroyed the central computer in Oh, shit. You need another 0 0.8 grams of salt. Doesn't taste of anything. Attention, you are exceeding your recommended daily dosage of sodium chloride. Good evening, Tom. Vida, <laughs> it's you. I thought I'd call you and thank you for your friendly message. Doesn't sound like you have a guilty conscience. Should I? It's thanks to you I don't have a job now. Oh, Tom, if we'd forbidden research that costs jobs, we'd all still be driving around in horse-drawn carriages today. Mm. Yeah, but it's nice to make someone personally responsible. Tell me, do you have any plans for this evening? <laughs> no. I know a really good bar for unemployed lawyers. Hmm. So that means your solution for my existential crisis is alcohol. Yes. Sie haben gesagt, die Gedanken seien frei. Doch meine sind es nicht. Sie haben gesagt, 
Das Licht könnte nie der Schatten sein. Sea Captain. Oh. <lacht> People keep saying I should do something creative, but I don't think the world is waiting for me to play the flute. What else is there left to do? But to program AI. Analyze poetry? Is this about my presentation on Schiller in sixth form? <laughs> it was legendary. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Being a lawyer. Fighting for clients. Winning. What about a neural enhancement? <laughs> a chip in my brain? Yeah. You'll be able to process information thousands of times quicker. Your IQ will go phew. You'll learn how to play the flute in five minutes and we'll have medical law done in an afternoon. We'll have AI for that too soon. Plus it's expensive and dangerous. It works with me. You? Yeah. Here, touch that. Do you feel it? Yes. <laughs> it feels good. Yeah. Ich werde dich wiedersehen, wenn ich die Augen schließe. Wenn ich die Augen schließe, bleiben die Gezeiten stehen. Come on, sweetie, we have to go. We have to go? I don't. What? How come? Class cancelled due to the heat? Federal Youth Games or what? The what? Federal, uh, never mind. So, you don't have school today? I've been suspended for two weeks. Not forever. Unfortunately. Oh, Ricky. And what was the reason this time, if I may ask? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't know what to say anymore. Ricky, once again, no school leaving exams, no university. No university, no job. I mean, is that so hard to understand? Dad, can you even hear yourself? University, job, for what? For what? Almond milk supply at low level. Ordering new supply automatically. Thank you, Ricky. There. You don't need to know anything yourself anymore. Maths, physics, chemistry. For what? Yes, but instead of maths and chemistry, you're doing creative writing anyhow. We've had AIs for that for a long time, remember? So enough with the bullshit about comprehension. It's all useless anyway. Now, pull yourself together. Okay, sit down. <laughs> oh, right. I forgot. You're one of them. Long live AI. To my father, humans will soon be just a temporary blip in evolution anyhow. That's such a sketchy trick. Honestly. Oh, no. Ricky, what's up with you? Nothing. That's the problem. The biographies of the people in the future, of the generations that will come after us, will always mean a flexible adaptation to new circumstances. It means that they will have to learn all their lives, to have the desire to keep developing throughout their life to adapt to new, changing circumstances. So if someone still wants to work on a conveyor belt, they'll probably find a niche for the few people that applies to, so that they are able to pursue their hobby. But for many of us, 
What will be left, and this is something that no machine can replace, is the work with people, that we care for each other and develop further together. That calls for a totally different social structure around us. That's the reason why we need to urgently talk about whether an unconditional basic income might be the logical consequence of this entire matter. Thanks. Hey. Oh, thanks. I'm starving. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and? Was it fun yesterday? Old acquaintance from school. Mm. Now a star in AI research. <laughs> Two days ago, you wanted to line up all the AI shits who stole your job against a wall. My first impulse. Often not the right answer. Hmm. What do you think about enhancement? You have a lens. Not the lens, the chip. If you can't beat them, join them. And be back in the game, you know? Then you'd be half computer yourself. And isn't it a really risky intervention? Apparently not anymore. And I assume your health insurance doesn't cover it. It was just an idea. We'll manage without it. I promise. I think you're great just as you are. I don't need a cyber Tom. Honestly, frightens me actually. But I also want you to be happy. Okay. Shall we go? Where to? The clinic. The batteries go into the earlobes. They need to be recharged every two to three years, uh, which you can do overnight. And what about complications? Some people have reported personality changes. In what way? Smarter doesn't equal nicer. And then what do I do? Is there a hard reset? You mean, um, uh, shoving pencils into your ears like with a computer? <laughs> no. <clears throat> but you can remove the chip again or deactivate it. But no one's ever done that yet, as far as I know. On the contrary, these are some testimonials from our patients a half a year after the operation. One of them studied Chinese art history in this time and is working as an expert at an auction house in Beijing today. One wrote a program that can turn exchange rate differences between stock exchanges into money in real time. Tiny amounts every time, but it turned him into a multi-millionaire. That'd be great. And you? Do you have a chip? No, uh, I have two kids at school, and they're burning a hole in my pocket. <laughs> if he was so convinced about it, he would have had one implanted ages ago. But he couldn't afford one, he said. And we can? You're only on basic income now. Could you mortgage the flat? Out of the question, Tom. My entire inheritance is in the place. I'll pay you back. It's an investment in our future. Getting paid every month for just sitting around at home doing nothing is not my thing. The vehicle will come to a halt shortly. Sorry. I want you to have dreams and for you to fulfill them. Destination has been reached. Please disembark. Because you're going to that job that you enjoy. And which brings in the money. What's that supposed to mean? I'm just afraid of losing the person I know. Do you understand? That won't happen. I promise. Door opening. Continuing journey. New destination, Mari and Tom home. Duration of journey, 14 minutes. These kinds of technologies are so new that they need regulation to make sure that we don't advance in areas that really affect the human condition before we understand what we're doing. Researchers right now are really interested in trying to improve particular cognitive functions. So looking at things like memory or attention or information processing. Um, one of the concerns is that we don't have a full understanding of all of the potential risks or side effects of doing this.
So one of the potential side effects of enhancing a narrow trait, let's say, for example, memory or attention, is that could in turn lead to other sorts of cognitive imbalances. So it, while it might sound really wonderful to have an improved memory, there might also be trade-offs that come with that. So that, that might affect your personality in other ways that we're not, we're not quite fully aware of. Turns out that to get something into your brain, the only way we know to do that is drilling a hole in your skull and putting it inside. We, but people, uh, engineers, are working on making the surgery pretty seamless, pretty fast, and actually almost painless, such that it actually works pretty well. Where are we right now? We know how to develop those neural implants. We know how to get them in using surgery, and we're trying to make it easier to get them inside your brain, better in terms of accuracy, and to agree as a society if it's something we want to have in our life. On the one hand, there are a lot of benefits and advantages to having these neural implants in your brain that will actually give you uh, superpowers, if you want, of mental capacity. On the other hand, there are risks that come from having someone basically be able to access your brain and control it and hack into your own mind. And the thing that we should uh, suggest when we think about it is critical, is the idea that if you look at history, oftentimes those changes to our body and brain happen first very, very slow, and then they ramp up and become a thing that everyone wants. Emergency announced. given your father a laxative to relax his muscle cramps. But, Vida, looking at how quickly the disease is progressing, he'll soon need a respirator. He'd be better off at hospital. Only over his dead body, he says. Professor Reinhardt. Good morning. Please don't be more formal than necessary. To be honest, I was expecting a call. Yes, forgive the intrusion, but... Um, after your presentation yesterday, I wasn't able to sleep all night. Isn't it incredibly naive of us to think that a superintelligence of this kind won't find ways and means to trick us and manipulate mm. us? Come with me. I'll show you something. <sighs> Look, shall I tell you why I sleep badly at night too sometimes? I suspect the answer's in there. <clears throat> oh. 
Almost every day and night, I can't stop thinking about how this computer could find out within five seconds what my innermost desires are. And not only mine, yours too. Everyone's. It would know how old you'll become, what you'll probably die of. It would know which partner would suit you best and which you'd end up going for, even if they're not the right person for you. This computer would know more about you than you know about yourself. I really came here for you to banish any doubts I was having. <clears throat> Look, if I didn't have any doubts, my team and I would act with gross negligence. But we can learn also from what happened on Molokai. As long as we're not 100% sure that this computer is working with our values and needs in mind, we must limit its communicative abilities considerably. You're censoring it. Well, I'd rather say that we're putting a muzzle on it. You see, in this phase, the computer can only answer with yes or no, and not with entire sentences. So there are no questions, no requests, and certainly not any orders. It learns to use the knowledge of the world without being able to manipulate us, because it can only answer with yes or no. And as long as it has no connection to the outside world, to the network, the mind of the AI, so to speak, stays in here. In here. Okay then, but promise me one thing. Don't only keep this AI on a very short leash, but also that young female colleague of yours. Don't worry. Vida, I mean, Miss Wittgenstein, is sometimes a little impatient with the rest of humanity, but she is by far the best AI developer around. Regulation usually only comes after something goes wrong. The problem with superintelligence is we might not get a second chance. It could have catastrophic risks for humanity. I advise governments around the world on their artificial intelligence strategies. What we see clearly is that many countries are very interested in AI for the opportunities that it brings. However, they put much less emphasis on safety and security. They put less priority on the safety and security measures because competition is very high and fast paced in AI among countries and companies. They want to be the leaders. They want to be first. And if they take the extra time for safety and security precautions, this might slow things down. So they put less priority on it. We need international standards for more transparency when developing AI systems of this kind. And we need a general, political, regulatory understanding that we cannot leave this playing field completely in the hands of money-oriented companies, but that the state, the international community of states, must have a significant say in this too. And at some point the states, the community of states, must make sure that this no longer takes place behind closed doors. Uh, but that when there is research into AI in a country, it needs to be made transparent and public. Stop. Mm. I'm so damn afraid. See you on the other side. Um, my dear colleagues and friends, the code that Vida Wittgenstein managed to isolate heralds a first historic step towards an artificial general intelligence. Programmed it yourself, gave it a value system to protect yeah. humanity that can't sure. be overwritten. So what could happen? Vida! What's up? 
Can you walk? <sighs> and what if this AI is evil? I mean, the things that I read are the stuff of nightmares. Yes, but not our AI. I can't let you out here. I know. If you had a chip, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. Because we'd be on equal footing. Don't you see that we can change the world? You and I together. You can't turn her. Please take a few days off. Ich werde dich wiedersehen, wenn ich die Augen schließe. Und wenn ich die Augen schließe, bleiben die Gezeiten stehen. Ich sah das Universum, da waren Milliarden Sterne, da waren Billionen. Richtiger Supernovel.